They say knowledge is power, but what if that knowledge is locked away, deliberately hidden from public view? Prepare to have the curtain pulled back on a world of clandestine operations, covert experiments, and shocking truths that the government doesn't want you to know. From classified documents leaked by whistleblowers to hidden histories buried in dusty archives, we're about to unveil the secrets that could shake the very foundations of our society. This is your chance to peek behind the curtain, to see the world through a different lens, and to question the narratives you've been told. Weipholm Experiments. This was a series of experiments in Sweden from 1945 to 1955. It's literally going to make you sick to your stomach when you find out what they did. Basically, they force-fed people with mental illness sweets to see if sugar was related to tooth decay. Imagine people just cramming food down your throat against your will. It's very gross. These experiments were conducted by the government and sponsored by the sugar industry. The experiments lasted for about two years, and by then, the teeth of about 50 of the subjects in the experiment had been completely ruined. In our ninth spot, we had the UK Special Demonstration Squad. This is the name of a group of undercover police officers in the UK. Now, the things that they did are going to shock you. For example, they would steal birth certificates and identities of people that had died at a young age. They'd make sure that they would be around their age and then use their identities. The younger the person died, the better, because that means they didn't already live a life that they would have to cover up. And then they would go around with this new identity. Some cases they actually got into relationships with women, but the whole time they did so just to spy on them. In November of 2015, the Metropolitan Police Force apologized to seven women tricked into relationships by these officers. Like imagine that, dating someone you're madly in love with, sometimes even having a kid with them, only for them to be like, oh, sorry, gotta go, I was only dating you to get intel on you and your friend circle. It's disgusting, and it's actually happened to multiple women. In our eighth spot, we have the radioactive waste. Apparently, there's a huge radioactive dumping zone located in Tonawanda, New York. In fact, they dumped more than 37 million gallons of radioactive waste from their World War II atomic bomb tests. This area has a high rate of cancer and thyroid conditions, and this is the reason why, and no one's talking about it. In our seventh spot, we have the hepatitis tests. In 1956, the US government began running tests on young individuals living at the Willowbrook State School in Staten Island. This was a state-supported institution for children with intellectual disabilities. And what they did to these students was give them hepatitis in order to track the development of the viral infection. Of course, they were being experimented on without knowledge or consent. To make matters worse, the study lasted 14 years. They also injected them with a number of drugs to see what they would do to their body and the hepatitis. Imagine intentionally making a group of people sick for an experiment. The grossest part is that when the government was exposed for this project, they tried to justify their actions by saying that these people were probably gonna wind up contracting it anyways. In our sixth spot today, we have Operation Popeye. This is another very wild one. Operation Popeye was a highly classified weather modification program during the Vietnam War from 1967 to 1972. You heard me correctly. The government learned how to control the weather. Basically, they wanted to increase rainfall in certain areas to prevent enemies and military supply trucks from being able to travel. In fact, they caused a number of landslides and flooding in that area. Weather manipulation has since been banned from use for military gain. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have SIM cards. We see all the time in movies and shows when people are trying to be super secret, they smash their phone and their SIM card, but as it turns out, maybe we should all be smashing our SIM cards, super secret lifestyle or not. In February of 2015, it was reported that Snowden provided documents that showed that the NSA and GCHQ had hacked into a Dutch company that is responsible for manufacturing and supplying 2 billion SIM cards per year, and they supply places like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and a variety of other providers. While this hack would suggest that the agencies would then now have access to billions of unique encryption 
keys, which could potentially allow them to bypass wireless providers and monitor both voice and data transmissions of every user that has a SIM card made by this company. The company did reply to the situation and said that they had been the target of at least two, quote, particularly sophisticated intrusions, and they suggested that they believed that the NSA and the GCHQ were responsible, but the company then denied that the hack was successful in gaining access to those encryption keys. Number nine, quantum computer. This next one is eye-opening, to say the least. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are going to ruin my life. They're getting really good at those. I feel like an old man every time I see those and fall for it. But thanks to our man Snowden, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. How fun must that be? It's called the quantum computer and it cost about $80 million to create. And no, it can't send you back in time. This computer is safely stored in a massive room-sized metal box, which is not intimidating at all. And it's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. I want to make so many jokes, but I won't. So it can break encryptions for just about anything. Finance records, medical, your old MSN, probably. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This quantum computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes, I don't know, years, but this supercomputer can break through a lot faster. I'm talking days. Just don't go in my MSN, please. In our number eight spot today, we have Project Dishfire. It was reported by The Guardian that it had been revealed that the NSA collects 200 million text messages a day from around the world. They then use these messages to pull the details of certain location information, contact networks, and the credit card details of different mobile users. It was also reported that the NSA also provided British intelligence agencies with all of the data just without the actual context of the text messages. So the NSA has all your secrets and nudies, but at least they didn't share them? I don't know. Basically, they have all of this data and at any point could potentially extract certain information like past travel plans, your financial transactions, your contacts, regardless of whether or not you were being investigated for something. Yes, this sounds illegal, unethical, and a little shady. And this revelation all came before former President Barack Obama gave a speech about proposed policy changes in reality action to the whistleblowing that was going on around Snowden and the NSA. Number seven, friends without benefits. Even allies of the United States are not safe here. Thanks to Snowden at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, which by the way, not just a couple of random dudes, they were spying on 35 world leaders. One of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out, of course, and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Really went personal with the friends comment there. It's like when you show somebody a photo on your phone and they start swiping, like, hi, hello, betrayal, see ya. Now, as you hear this, you're thinking, well, I'm not a world leader, what's the big deal here? Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone calls in Spain for the average folk. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys, maybe. In our number six spot today, we have the Brazil spying scandal. It was reported by The Guardian that Brazil was second only to the United States in terms of the amount of communications that were being subjected to surveillance by the NSA. This means that the NSA were seriously spying on millions of Brazilians, including the emails and phone calls of their president. At the G20 summit that year, which took place in Russia, Brazil's president at the time, Dilma Rousseff, had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Obama in reference to this. He said that he would look into it and get back to her, but before he could, more NSA tea was spilled and it was revealed that the agency had also targeted Petrobras, which is Brazil's state oil company. This led the president to call this new information industrial espionage, and as a result, she called off her scheduled visit to the White House and demanded answers. The called off visit was important because it was to be the first state visit by a Brazilian president in about two decades. And although the Obama administration claimed that it was a joint decision made by both presidents, some media outlets described it as the sternest punishment that had been received at that time in response to all of these NSA leaks. This also led Brazil to take a multitude of steps to hopefully get away from the American-run internet. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with HIV. In the 1980s, the HIV epidemic broke out. 
No one knew how it spread, they just knew that it should be feared, and tons of LGBTQ plus community members were sadly contracting the virus. Well, rumor has it that HIV was a government experiment that was meant to wipe out the undesirables. Of course, the US government has denied this claim, and it's just a conspiracy we don't know for sure. But based on the other experiments done on minority groups, it's hard to know what to believe. In our fourth spot today, we have Project 112 and Project SHAD, or S-H-A-D. Project 112 and Project SHAD took place from 1962 to 1973 and involved a number of veterans or military personnel. Basically, both tests involved exposing these people to substances they might want to use in warfare. Nearly 6,000 people were exposed to Coxiella burnetti, which is Q fever, Staphylococcus enterotoxin B, which causes food poisoning, and sarin and somin gas. Sarin is a very, very dangerous nerve gas, and somin can cause death in minutes. Both can be fatal if only the tiniest amount gets on the skin. These men had no clue that they were being exposed to this. Moving on to number three, we have Project Sunshine. This is another very messed up government project. During the 1950s, the US government was using stillborns to conduct radiation tests on. They wanted to determine the effects that radiation would have on humans, and how much we could withstand in case of a nuclear fallout. They called this Project Sunshine, and it was anything but rainbows and sunshine. What's sad is that the government was stealing body parts and tissues from morgues, without families' consent. It's said that more than 1,500 samples were gathered worldwide. This is incredibly sad and sick. Coming in at number two, we have the syphilis experiments. In 1932, the US Public Health Service created an experiment to see the health effects of untreated syphilis. But the test subjects were told that they were receiving free treatment to cure their syphilis. And that was a lie. Instead of giving the men the recommended penicillin treatment, they gave them placebos, like aspirin. Sadly, 28 men died of syphilis because of these experiments, 100 more passed away from syphilis-related complications, and 40 spouses contracted this disease. And 19 women who gave birth passed on syphilis to their newborn children. In 1997, Bill Clinton apologized to the survivors and their families on behalf of the government. And he admitted that the tests were, and I quote, profoundly and morally wrong. And in our number one spot today, we have the radiation tests. In 1953, a number of tests were done on pregnant women to see the effects that radioactive iodine would have on them and their newborns. These studies were terrible. In one study, researchers gave these women doses of iodine-131. Sadly, they all miscarried. When they did, they continued to study the women's aborted embryos. Another study took place after World War II. 829 pregnant mothers in Tennessee were given vitamin drinks. They were informed that these drinks would improve their health and their babies, but it actually contained radioactive iron and the researchers wanted to see how fast the radioisotopes crossed into the placenta. Several of the young passed away from these experiments. Four died from cancers as a result of the experiments, and the women experienced rashes, bruises, anemia, hair and tooth loss, and cancer as well. Meanwhile, they just wanted the best for their babies and thought that this drink was going to help them not kill them. Number five, backup. When Glenn Greenwald kicked this whole thing off in 2013 with Snowden and his reveals, it was this massive security breach, obviously. Snowden was, of course, in hot water immediately, but he was ahead of the game from the start. See, Snowden had told Greenwald that if anything crazy happens to him, well, he'll just leak even more information. If Snowden was unable to access these encrypted documents on one of his four laptops, for, then it was set up to automatically send those private documents to higher ups, aka the people directly involved in the leak. On top of that, Snowden reminded The Guardian that he has many, many more secrets to spill, specifically the NSA surveillance systems. This is why you make backups. 
Duly noted, Snowden. In our number four spot today, we have the embassy catastrophe. There was a document from 2007 that was leaked which named 38 different embassies and missions that were so called targets of US surveillance. This document didn't quite make it clear whether or not these targets were being looked into by only the NSA or if the CIA and FBI were also involved. The document described certain things like bugging fax machines with devices that allowed them to listen in on conversation, and the document also listed the names of different programs that are used within the embassies. The document showed that the embassies targeted weren't just those of countries who seemed to be enemies with the United States, and instead included places like India and Mexico, Greece, and Turkey. It appears as if the goal was to gain insider information into the diplomatic relations between the targets and the United States. The EU embassy in Washington DC was one of the targets on this document, and this leak had the potential to have jeopardized one of the largest attempted free trade agreements in the world because shortly after this all came out, negotiations were set to begin between the EU and the United States. The French president at the time made his anger about the situation very public and stated that all future negotiations will only be made under the agreement that the United States cease all unauthorized surveillance of any EU buildings or personnel. Number three, China. I mentioned earlier that summit where the United States originally wanted to call out China for cyber attacks, but instead Snowden leaked a PowerPoint training slideshow and the tables were turned just like that. Snowden revealed himself as this massive spy kid on June 12th, and he said he was planning on remaining in Hong Kong until he was kicked out. But in his first press interview since coming out with all this information, he informed South China's Morning Post that the NSA was hacking Chinese and Hong Kong computers since back in 2009. That's a long time ago. It's like when Avatar 1 came out. That's how long ago that was. More specifically, Snowden said that the NSA hacked the Chinese University of Hong Kong, aka the heart of all internet traffic in Hong Kong. Now, of course, this is eye opening, but there's many who see this hack attack as a good thing. See, citizens want to know what their government's up to, and honestly, I myself would love to know if the NSA was rummaging through my chats. So, a poll was conducted on June 10th and 11, and apparently, 44% of Americans were on board with Snowden's outing. They were with him, and 42% of Americans say that he's a bad boy. 57% were not a fan of the NSA's action, while 37% were on board. 30% of folks liked the fact that they were being spied on. That's some weird kind of kink, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you want the NSA in your Dropbox? Let us know in the comments your thoughts below. We'd love to hear from you. In our number two spot today, we have caller information. In 2013, it was reported by The Guardian that according to the documents that were leaked by Snowden, the Obama administration has allowed the NSA to collect different caller information from Verizon. This was done through what was called a quote, business records provision of the Patriot Act that was established under the presidency of George W. Bush. It allowed the government to order Verizon to hand over caller information every single day. The information included things like the time, location, and duration of the call. The information began being collected under the Bush administration in 2001, and they were collected from AT&T, Verizon, and Bell South. Of course, once these documents were leaked and the information became public knowledge, US officials began trying to reassure the public that this surveillance was somehow necessary and was actually a program vital to national security, but many people rightfully felt like the spying was an unnecessary necessary invasion of their privacy. This one is tricky because there certainly is a fine line with these things. And finally, number one. PowerPoint. Nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation. But when it comes to the NSA, odds are it's going to be a little juicy. This slideshow is used to train US intelligence and I gotta say 41 pages? That's it? I did 45 on medieval nights in high school. Step your game up. This program called PRISM cost about 20 million a year and it was the highlight of this leak. PRISM kicked off back in 2007. Originally they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple come 2012, well that's when things got a little bit fishy as most things are with Apple, specifically their maps. That was horrible. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants like Google, Skype, or even YouTube. Yeah, right here, they're listening right now. So your search history, emails, anything that rolls through those, usernames, passwords, well, they've got them. Even Skaterboy69 and Hotmail, odds are they're already looking. 
You're done. You're canceled, Brad. There was a summit in California which originally was tense. The United States were accusing China of cyber attacks, but right after Edward leaked this prism tea, they didn't have much power at that summit. China and Europe's citizens weren't too pleased here, and honestly, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a botched meeting. I can understand why. Kicking off the list at number 10, nuclear site list. Here on Most Amazing, we love lists. I'm not sure if you can tell, but apparently the US government also fancies a list or two. Back when Obama was still running the show, a report was delivered to Congress. Well, it was supposed to be. The 266 page report featured every nook and cranny about the US nuclear program, and it was released publicly on the government printing office's website and draft forum by accident. Yeah, just a casual PDF that shows us literal maps to stockpiled fuel used for nuclear warheads back in the day. We love those. The only PDFs I actually enjoy are those ones, actually. Does this stuff happen often? How does this happen? I thought this type of stuff could never happen, right? Well, MIT professor John M. Dutch said these screw ups do happen, and it does doesn't look like a serious breach. I mean, it certainly sounds serious, but okay, we'll trust the government. Thank you, sir. Let's do it. Number nine, climate gate. Yeah, we had a smooth one off the bat. Now we're getting right into the serious stuff. Climate stuff, <laughs> climate change and stuff. A little different sounding than Watergate, but we'll get to that one later on, obviously. Climate gate, this was back in 2009 when some hackers, some hackers released thousands of emails and files all from the climate research unit in the UK. These documents, okay, hold on to your butts for this one, they show scientists suppressing the publication of research going against global warming. So this sparked a bunch of bad ideas because at that point in 2009, we just believed it. We just stopped listening at all. Climate change critics were like, aha, I knew it. It was all a conspiracy this whole time. The CRU responded and said the emails were out of context and that the planet is indeed heating up and we're still in fact burning towards our demise, but these docs leaked literally weeks before the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Denmark, so peculiar timing, I'd say. Science fired back pretty quick. Scientists all around the world were actively proving at that point that humans actively are causing global warming. Today we're uh, scrambling a bit more to figure this one out than 2009. Yeah. A few more of you believe this time around. Number eight, God Save the Queen. This one's quite grim, but I have to talk about it. Have you ever wondered what happens, what will happen after the Queen passes away? I mean, I know it's the last thing we want to think about right now because as, uh, dark, obviously, but it's hard not to think of, especially when Politico magazine releases Operation London Bridge to the public. Yeah, what is that? This magazine somehow got documents showing each and every step in detail what'll happen when that fateful day arrives. There'll be phone calls to the Prime Minister, of course, would be first. Customs require that the Prime Minister is informed by the monarch's private security. Flags will fly at half-mast, of course, but oddly enough, in this document, the Queen's death is referred to as D-Day. Yeah, nine days of protocols will follow after and after a service at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, that's when Queen Elizabeth will be buried with King George VI. It's dark, but I mean, imagine reading about this one morning in 2021. What an odd article. What a, what a brutal way to wake up. Number seven, secret PowerPoint. Yeah, nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation, but I'll do my best. Here we go. When it comes to the NSA, odds are this PowerPoint is going to be pretty juicy, right? This slideshow was often used to train US intelligence, and I got to say, 41 pages? That's it. I did 45 on Medieval Knights and High school. That's all I'm saying. Step your game up. This program was called PRISM. You probably heard about this. This is a big deal. And it cost about $20 million a year. This was the highlight of the Snowden leak. PRISM kicked off back in 2007. See, originally they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple come 2012, that's when things got a little dicey as most things are with Apple. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants, Google, Skype, YouTube even, so I don't know, search history, you may wanna delete that stuff. There was a summit in California which originally was tense. The United States was accusing China of cyber attack, but right after Edward Snowden leaked the prism tea, they didn't have much power at said summit. So China and Europe citizens were obviously not too pleased here. Yeah, leaked data, we don't, we don't like hearing about that. There's a, this one gets a little worse. Number six. Big Brother is watching. Even allies of the United States are not safe here, okay? Thanks to Snowden, our boy again, gotta mention him a couple times in this list. At the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of eyes, a lot of spies. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of dudes. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Oh, brutal. She said the F word too. It's like, hey, 
We were friends, pal. Don't go through my phone. Don't swipe left in the photos, okay? Betrayal. Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone, like regular phone calls in Spain for the average folks. So if you thought you were off the hook, you're not, literally and figuratively. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys, maybe. You know, save some tea for in person. You don't want to give up all that good stuff on the phone. Dive right into it. Okay, so right now you can't actually travel to Russia at all because of their ongoing conflict with Ukraine. And while you used to be able to travel to Russia, you've never been allowed to go here. Mezagori Bachkortosan, if I pronounced that wrong, I am so sorry, but it's a closed town located in the Republic of Bachkortosan in Russia, located in the southern Ural Mountains. The town is a closed administrative territorial formation, meaning that it's only open directly to the federal federal government of Russia, and to be completely honest, there's not a lot of information about what goes on in the town. Construction started around 1991 and ended in 2002, and the earliest government decrees relating to the town date all the way back to the 1970s, but of course, those decrees are classified. While there is no way of knowing for sure, because there's not much going on on the top side of the town, there are rumors that a massive bunker capable of housing 60 to 300,000 people exists underground with a variety of intercepting tunnels. And another theory states that the underground base is used for nuclear weapons testing, a scary thought that unfortunately we have no way of verifying or discrediting for the time being. The UK has quite the contingency plan in the case of all out nuclear war. It's known as the letters of last resort and not only is it top secret, but it's also pretty foolproof. The letters of last resort are four completely identically worded handwritten letters written by the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom to the commanding officers of the four British ballistic submarines. The letters are delivered in person in a sealed envelope. When the commanding officers receive these letters, they do not open them, but rather place them inside of a safe within a safe inside of each of the four ballistic nuclear armed submarines. The letters are only to be read in the event that an enemy nuclear strike destroys both the British government and also kills or otherwise incapacitates both the Prime Minister and their designated second in command. When a new Prime Minister enters into the office, the letters written by the former Prime Minister are destroyed without ever being opened and then replaced by ones containing the contingency plan of the current leader of the country. Seeing as the world has never experienced a global nuclear war, it is assumed that no one other than the Prime Ministers who wrote the letters have ever read any of them. Hopefully it stays that way because if someone is reading them, it's probably because because something really bad happened. DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, is a research and develop agency of the United States Department of Defense responsible for the development of emerging technologies for use by the military. While many of DARPA's projects are publicized, many, many more are not, which makes sense, I suppose. I mean, they are in charge of engineering some of the country's most important defense efforts, one of which included detonating a massive nuclear warhead on the mostly uninhabited Go Islands deep in the South Atlantic in 1958 in an effort to create a long-lived radiation belt that would degrade any kind of nuclear missile aimed at the US by the Soviets. Along with this, DARPA has manufactured interfaces capable of controlling insect actions, lab-grown blood, plant-eating robots, and mechanical elephants. Oh, and they are also responsible for the development of the internet. If those are the kinds of things they are capable of and upfront about, I should shudder to think of what they refuse to tell the public. The location of the United States Secret Subsurface Guided Nuclear Submarines, SSGNs for short, along with their objectives, are an incredibly close kept secret, and for good reason too. For one, they are worth billions of dollars, and for another, they contain intercontinental ballistic missiles that, like the British ballistic submarines, contain nuclear warheads. If the location of any of these SSGNs were to be discovered by the wrong people, it could significantly endanger the United States Defense Forces, not to mention the safety of the world. That's not to say there aren't any exceptions to the rule. In 2013, for a brief moment, the location of SSGN USS Seawolf became known after the submersible surfaced in Norway. But that's pretty much the extent of public knowledge on the vessels. In fact, for the majority of the time, the only people who know the exact location of the submarines are their commanding officers, which is insane. 
when you take into consideration that along with the commanding officers, these vessels are manned by crews who have a general idea of the area they're in but have no idea exactly where they are at any given moment of their deployment. Talk about top secret. For those of you who don't know, the Vatican, located in the heart of Rome, Italy, is actually its own country. The status was granted on the 11th of February in 1929 after the signing of the Lateran Treaty, which helped put an end to the political and religious turmoil in Italy. And while many believe the Roman Empire fell in 476 AD, many others believe that it lives on to this day under the guise of the Vatican and that it is now more powerful than ever. Whether or not this is true remains unknown, due to the secretive nature of the highly secure Vatican secret archives, located presumably in the basement of the Vatican, said to hold the truth about the fall of the Roman Empire as well as many more of the world's most guarded secrets, including suppressed historical documents that could quite literally alter the course of history, and controversial religious texts that could challenge the teachings of the very organization guarding them. The only people with access to the extensive library are the Pope himself and qualified scholars granted permission by the Pope himself. Given that the archives might very well hold the answers to some of the world's most pressing questions, I really hope that one day it will become open to the public, but I guess for now, we'll just have to wait and see. In 1717, a German man named Johann Bessler convinced the world that he had created a machine that could just about turn the entire world on its head. A self-sustaining mechanism that ran on nothing but perpetual energy that could run continuously for at least 54 days at a time. This is, of course, based off a test he ran where the machine ran for 54 consecutive days at a time. This machine also underwent many other tests and passed many rigorous inspections, but in the end, it was destroyed by none other than Bessler himself, who completely demolished his invention in a paranoid fit of rage because he believed that without a patent and given the groundbreaking nature of the machine, it would surely be stolen. Or at least that's the official reason. But considering the fact that this machine would have essentially put big oil and big electric completely out of business, I personally can't help but wonder if there's another reason that the invention and its incredible capabilities were never shared with the world. It is said that Bessler took the secrets of this device to his grave, but again, not so sure. Could the existence of this machine and the way in which it operates be the biggest kept secret by world governments to date? Perhaps, but the hard truth, we may never know. Number five, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, personal information from 191 million voters was leaked to the public online. Yeah, this feels like yesterday. I remember this all unfolding. I was like, what, how? Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. See, Forbes had described Vickery as, dare I say, a good hacker. There was referred to as these white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploding them, you know? Unlike Snowden or other people. That's the key, that's the Donny difference. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims here, so it was a big one. All their names, addresses, birth dates, phone numbers, emails, you name it, things you don't want other people knowing, let alone third parties, were all out there. If you could vote, you were exposed. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak. CSO Online and databreaches.net suggest that the information more than likely came from software provider Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gillum announced that that was not the case and they did not create the database. Although he conceded that it is possible that some of the information that it contains may have come from the data we make available for free to campaigns. He's like, no, we didn't do it, but maybe we did. <laughs> it's like, okay. So a third party took what they could and really ran with it. That's terrifying. Time to change your email again. Number four, psychoelectronic weapons. Yeah, this sounds like something Iron Man uses. It doesn't sound too chill now, does it? Psychoelectronic weapons. The first time Curtis Waltman heard of these uh, was by accident, as you could have guessed. He was receiving documents via Yahoo and they were not what he expected. See, originally he had filed a Freedom of Information Act request to Washington State Fusion Center. See, he was trying to find out more on the clashes between Antifa and the far right, but he got a response and it was all about experimental weapons. Guy gets a zip file back in return called EM effects on human body. He's like, Big Shiny Tune 6? He's like, what? I didn't ask for this. Way too many viruses in that one. Big, Big Shiny Tune 7, I think, was a good one. That's the good one. In this document, he saw diagrams on these weapons and the effects that they have on people. There's muscle quaking, all body pain. One of the effects allowed users to control their dreams. Is this a weapon? This is this is pretty remarkable. This was clearly sent by mistake. Ah, the only emails I get are student loans, and those ones 
are not by mistake. Those ones are definitely on purpose. They're like, Mr. Taylor. I'm like, oh, oh God, they found me. Number three, quantum computer. Uh, this next one's pretty eye-opening. Here we go. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are also getting way too good. I've fallen for way too many fake trailers. I thought they were doing a Back to the Future reboot with Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. for like four days. All fake. Whole thing's fake. But thanks to our man Snowden, the OG secret revealer, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. Yeah, how fun must that one be? I wonder if it can run Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 without getting hot. No computer can do that. It's called the Quantum Computer, and it costs about 80 million to create this program. This computer is safely stored in a massive room size metal box, not intimidating at all. It's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. So it can break encryptions for just about anything. Finance records, medical, your old MSN, hopefully, maybe, probably, definitely not. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This quantum computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes years. This supercomputer they're working on can break through a lot faster. We can get through in days, even hours. So you better clear that search history now while you still can. Thanks for the hot tips, Snowden. I was gonna switch to PC gaming, but you know what? I'll wait it out. I'll wait till this new one comes out. It looks a little faster. Number two, WikiLeaks Warlogs. Companies have to be somewhere, right? We're in a film studio in Toronto. We go to a certain place. We leave said certain place in a said certain area. Right? Where do places like WikiLeaks live? How do they stay secure? Well, in Stockholm, apparently, buried under 100 feet below street level in an old nuclear bunker. That's where right next to Pirate Bay. They're neighbors, actually. They knock on the cement walls. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banoff. Now, this is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks, but Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker behind a two-foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators, so he's secure. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published Army Field reports from 2004 to 2009. Now, it's one of the biggest leaks in U.S. history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraq war logs out of the 109,000 confirmed in total. That's horrible. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics afterwards. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009. One of the biggest leaks in US history, no doubt about it. And finally, number one, Watergate. Yeah, it's not an internet leak, but it's too good to talk about. This is OG, come on. We have to finish on Watergate. In the middle of 1972, there were five men who were all arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, DC. Now, it was pretty obvious they intended on bugging the place. They looked like spy kids. They had all the gears. They were, you know, it was fishy. As the year went on, the election came closer and closer, and then all of a sudden, out of the woodwork comes this anonymous source who fed information to Washington Post reporters that apparently the Watergate bugging incident was a massive campaign of political spying and sabotage kicked off by none other than President Nixon himself. Yeah, he was trying to get that re-election. Now, despite this information leak and it being reported in the news and all that good stuff, Nixon was still re-elected, even though he was involved in this entire scandal. These men were clearly linked to a fundraising group for Nixon, but his administration just kept denying any involvement. It wasn't until a year later in 1972 when reporters Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, they also came forward and exposed more stuff. Yeah, they exposed the administration's role in this entire scandal and they had an inside source, an FBI agent named Mark Feltz, and this ultimately led to Nixon resigning later in 1974. The first president to do so. In China, when you wish to report a crime, you are instructed to turn to your local and provincial governments. If you feel as though those governments have failed to serve justice, only then are you to turn to the central government of China located in Beijing. But here's the thing. The central government uses direct complaints to determine the effectiveness of the local and provincial governments. And the more complaints brought to the central government, the worse the local and provincial governments look. And so in order to avoid scrutiny from the central government of Beijing, these other smaller governments have come up with a plan. A very malicious plan. To avoid getting in trouble, the local and provincial governments hire thousands of individuals to hunt down, imprison, and torment anyone attempting to file a complaint with the central government. They are taken to what's known as black jails, which are usually abandoned buildings or unoccupied homes. For a while, the central government claimed to have no knowledge of this practice, but they later admitted to being aware of what was taking place outside of Beijing. Whether or not these so 
so-called black jails are still in operation today is an answer unfortunately known only by members of the Chinese government. Now it's no secret that the North Korean government is full of secrets, but perhaps none more closely kept than Room 39, officially referred to as Central Committee Bureau 39 of the Workers' Party of Korea, and also referred to as just Bureau 39, Division 39, and Office 39. Why 39? I don't know. Like I said, the organization is top secret. But what we do know about it is this. It's a party organization that seeks to maintain the Foreign Currency Slush Fund, which is a fund used for miscellaneous income and expenses for the country's leaders. And we also know that it's estimated to bring in between 500 million and 1 billion US dollars per year, possibly more, and that it likely makes its money through illegal activities such as counterfeiting, producing controlled substances, and even international insurance fraud. I'd say I'm surprised, but I'd be lying. The Bell is not a very scary name for a supposed weapon of mass destruction. And to be fair, neither is the German name for the device, Die Glocke. But unfortunately, an unassuming name doesn't change the fact that if the weapon is indeed real, it's absolutely terrifying and absolutely capable of causing some pretty serious damage. Also, if the weapon is real, it was developed by some pretty bad dudes belonging to a pretty oppressive military, i.e. the dictator-run military of Germany circa 1933 to 1940. The weapon is said to be the product of occultism, anti-gravity, and free energy suppression research capable of taking out entire civilizations. Furthermore, it is described as being 4 meters 12 feet high, 3 meters 9 feet in diameter, and filled with a purplish metallic looking substance that is supposedly highly radioactive. If the German government does in fact possess this weapon, I personally hope we never find out the hard way. And then there's the Greenbrier Spa Facility, a privately owned facility located in West Virginia that sits on about 11,000 acres of land and has some pretty insane security measures, including an underground bunker. Yeah. As you can imagine, Greenbrier Spa was pretty intensely guarded and was, at one point, strictly reserved for the world's most elite individuals. The building has been around since 1778 and the underground bunkers were installed during the Cold War in an effort to protect the members of Congress should the need arise. The spa itself has welcomed 26 different presidents, many more politicians, and countless celebrities, while the secrets of what the inside of the spa slash bunker looks like have since been revealed to the world as it's now officially open to the public, the secrets of what really went on in the most exclusive spa in the world back in the day remain a complete and utter mystery. I have to say though, I'm guessing it was a whole lot more than just seaweed wraps, pedicures, and deep tissue massages. Kicking off the list at number 10, nuclear secrets. Today's technology, it's getting faster, it's getting better, it's getting harder, it's getting stronger, right? All the good stuff. I'm learning more from Wordle than I did in high school, okay? But how secure are these study apps? That's the million dollar question. A year ago, we quickly saw how a flashcard app could expose nuclear secrets. Yeah, this is, a, this is a big one. Nuclear bases around Europe are housing US troops, and while they're there studying, they're using online flashcard apps to remember complex security codes. Makes a lot of sense. They would use common sites such as Quizlet, Cram, Chegprep, etc. There's one set of 70 cards, again, holding top secret information titled Study with an exclamation mark. Study, there we go. Each card contained information regarding live and non-live nuclear weapons. Guys like six times six, 36. Okay, eight times eight, 64. And uh, that's a nuclear warhead. Okay, I don't know what this flash card is. That's, uh, that's a nuke. Number nine, Guantanamo files. Back in April 2011, a pretty heavy leak hit the web. And no, it wasn't Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man 3, it wasn't any of that. And no, it wasn't Avengers 1. WikiLeaks, who I covered in part one of the series, they also released the Guantanamo files, and they exposed the way prisoners were treated in Guantanamo Bay. In total, there were 779 documents that got released, and in said documents, it was discovered that innocent civilians, both from Pakistan and Afghanistan, were both being held there without any charges. It's brutal, there's some shady stuff going on. The age ranges as well for these prisoners go on from very young adults to an 89 year old. So again, many of these these prisoners are being held without any charges and they're really young and really old, being treated like crap. This is a heavy leak and in these documents we also see the way these prisoners are treated in detail. The way information was extracted from them was, it was horrible, it was straight up torture. Number eight, 
off-road vehicles. Where we're going, we don't need roads. We're living in a pretty amazing time, I guess, when it comes to space exploration and travel and stuff. We recently sent off the James Webb Space Telescope to see even more of our universe. We're getting bigger and better. We're going deeper. 2020 was also the year where UFOs were just on the news. But what happens when these two worlds collide? Figuratively speaking, of course. Just over a year ago, an astrophysicist by the name of Eric Davis, he gave this classified briefing to the Defense Department mentioning these off-world vehicles. Secret off-world vehicles. What could he possibly mean by that? I mean, I mean the ISS, that is technically an off-world vehicle. Spaceships aren't new, you know what I mean? Well, he added the fact that these off-world vehicles were being made somewhere else as well. Not just, you know, on Earth. Like some space BMW, I don't know. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid is quoted in a Times article saying he believes that crashes of objects of unknown origin may have occurred and that any recovered materials should be studied. Okay, more than fair. Eric Davis also once produced this report to try and convince the government to invest in time travel and use wormholes to achieve such a task. Yeah, this is the Christopher Nolan segment of the list. This guy knows some stuff, for sure. He actually said he studied these crashed materials and his conclusion is that there's no way humans could have ever created it. Yeah, I don't know. Alien materials? What do you guys think? Do we, are we hiding alien tech? I think so. Number seven, weaponized lightning. This whole time I thought Thor worked for the Avengers. Apparently he's working for the CIA. How fun is that? Nice. Back in the late 60s, the scientist, who remains anonymous to this day, always a good sign, well, they figured out how to weaponize and bottle lightning. Can't imagine what Thor. They were determined to weaponize lightning to create Thor, I guess. That way, there was little to no evidence left over after a planned attack. The idea, as crazy as it sounds, is pretty genius. Once it got online, people read it and they're like, oh, this actually, this is a good idea. It never made it to its final stages, thankfully, but when Forbes was allowed to release these declassified CIA files, we got a better idea of what was going on in the sky at the time. The plan was to draw these extremely thin metal wires from airplanes or rockets, whatever the case, something flying high in the sky. They would drop a metal fishing line through the clouds and then send many volts of electricity down to an enemy camp or whatever. That would for sure mess up their communications if it had worked. If, again, leaked ideas that never came to fruition. Number six, spinning cube. Remember when UFO footage was being leaked in 2020? We had Senate hearings and we just didn't care. So many of these UFO documents ended up online from the 2020, you know, alien leak, whatever that was. That was crazy. Some are too strange not to mention, evidently. Especially in a list of government secrets. Well, of course, we're going to talk about some aliens. One of these leaked videos, I can't lie, there's, there's some odd behavior going on here. In this video, we see a spinning alien cube almost. Yeah, it was spotted over Missouri and then only a couple hours later, it was seen again, but this time 700 miles away. So whatever it was, it's moving quite fast. 44-year-old Matthew Jandeka was minding his own business, hanging out on the porch when this caught his attention. It was a sunny day and the light reflecting off the cube caught his eye. But a day earlier, another Another dude, 30 year old Justin Johnson, saw the exact same thing. He saw it driving home. He saw the light and the reflections also caught his eye in the sky. At first he thought maybe it was a balloon, but the movements were too odd, you know? Maybe it's another drone project. Uh, what do we think? Is there cube, cube aliens now? Some geometric aliens coming down? Someone call Shia LaBeouf. We have more cubes. We have space cubes. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Raven Rock Mountain Complex. The Raven Rock Mountain Complex is a highly secure military installation located in Pennsylvania in the United States, and it is often referred to as the quote, underground Pentagon. This facility, also known as Site R, was built during the Cold War as a backup command center for the Pentagon and was designed to ensure continuity of government operations in case of a nuclear attack. The complex is located inside of a mountain and has a vast network of underground tunnels, facilities, and backup power systems to keep the facility running in case of a disaster. And it is even equipped with communication systems, medical facilities, and living quarters to support personnel in the event of an emergency. Basically, it has everything someone would need in the case of the absolute worst case scenario. Although the site was built for the tense times of the Cold War, it is still in use today, but the functions and capabilities of the site remain classified. We know it serves as a critical facility for the US government and military, and that it has been activated as recently as during the 2020 crisis. In our number nine spot today, we have the Cheyenne Mountain Complex. Complex. Located in the Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station near Colorado Springs, Colorado, this complex is a military installation and bunker. It was originally built during the Cold War as a command center for the United States North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, and as a nuclear bomb shelter for its personnel. The complex consists of multiple tunnels and chambers, including the famous blast doors that weigh 25 tons each and can withstand a nuclear blast. It has its own power plant, water supply, air filtration,
filtration system, and food storage, which is of course all by design to allow for it to sustain its occupants for an extended period in the case of emergency. It has a strategic location and a huge, impressive design, which is why it is regarded as a symbol of the country's preparedness for national security threats. I mean, the thing is even built with a bunch of springs so that none of the buildings will shift more than an inch during all potential types of disaster. That is wild. Like I mentioned, it was built in the Cold War era, but that doesn't mean it's totally out of use now. The purpose of the complex has evolved over the years, and today it still serves as a vital command center for NORAD and other military agencies, and the complex remains an essential part of the United States military infrastructure. In our number 8 spot today, we have Metro 2. During the time where Stalin was in power, it is said that he instructed that an underground secret transport system would be built known as Metro 2. This mysterious underground system is said to connect different administrative institutions, and it's even rumored that it contains apartments and different technical rooms. It's sort of like a secret escape tunnel for high-level officials. Of course, it's completely blocked off to outsiders or to the general public, and while the Moscow Metro administration denies that these tunnels even exist, there was an urban exploration group back in 1994 that claimed to have found the entrance. At this point in time, the existence of only one of the rumored four lines has been confirmed, and it is called D6. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Yamantau Mountain Complex. The Yamantau Mountain Complex is a highly secretive and heavily guarded underground facility located in the Ural Mountains of Russia. Its purpose and functions are shrouded in mystery, and the Russian government has actually never officially acknowledged its existence. It is believed to have been built during the Cold War as a nuclear weapons storage facility and command center. There is an above ground town called Mezgor, and that town is super secret and off limits, so much so that people aren't even allowed within the vicinity of it, and this is all thought to be because this town might be holding the complex underneath it. The underground complex is said to cover an area over 400 square miles with many tunnels and underground facilities, and its exact purpose and current use remains unknown, with various theories and speculations ranging from a bunker for the Russian government and military leaders to a storage facility for advanced weapons and technology. Some have even speculated that it could be used as a launch site for missiles or a secret laboratory for biological weapons research. Despite many attempts by outsiders to uncover the truth about this complex, the Russian government has remained quite tight-lipped, and they maintain strict security measures around the area. In our number 6 spot today, we have Project Iceworm. This is a little different than most of the others on this list, and that is because this is the name of what was once a top-secret, super-classified mission. This secret mission took place in the 1960s, and it was basically intended to build a series of mobile nuclear missile launch sites under the Greenland ice sheet, because this would then house medium-range missiles close enough that they would be able to strike targets within the Soviet Union. This project was called Project Iceworm, but there was another project called Camp Century. Basically, Camp Century was to test out Project Iceworm and see how likely it would be and how feasible it would be. So, engineers went to work and created a network of underground tunnels and buildings that included a place to stay, a kitchen, a hall for hanging out, there were supply rooms, and even a communication center and a nuclear power plant. This was all kept as a super secret for a long time, and was even kept from the Danish government for seven years. In 1966, however, the project was cancelled because of the shifting ice. This created unstable conditions for the underground tunnels that are most likely crushed now, but still remain beneath the Arctic. Number five always listening. I mentioned earlier in part one that summit where the United States originally wanted to call out China for cyber attacks, but instead Snowden ended up leaking a PowerPoint training slideshow, and now the tables were all of a sudden turned. Snowden ended up revealing himself as the spy kid on June 12th, and he said that he planned on remaining in Hong Kong until he was kicked out. But in his first press interview since coming out, he informed South China's Morning Post that the NSA was hacking Chinese and Hong Kong computers since way back in 2009. More specifically, Snowden said the NSA hacked the Chinese University of Hong Kong, aka the heart of all internet traffic in Hong Kong. That's pretty 
eye opening. It's a lot of stuff. You're seeing a lot of seeing a lot of secrets in there. But there's many who see this hack as a good thing. Of course, citizens want to know what their governments are up to. I personally would love to know if the NSA was rummaging through my chats. You know what I mean? So a poll was conducted on June 10th. Turns out 44% of Americans were on board with Snowden's outing, and 42% of Americans say that he's a bad boy. Yeah, 57% were not a fan of the NSA's actions, while 37% were on board. Number four, friends without benefits. Even allies of the United States aren't safe here. Thanks to Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. Yeah, the NSA tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of guys this time around. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA right after finding out and said that this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Yeah, she said friends, that's crazy. It's like when you show your buddy a photo on your phone and then they start swiping. You're like, hi, what are you doing? Betrayal, what are you doing? Now, as you hear this, you're thinking, well, I'm not a world leader. I don't care, what's the big deal here? What can going through my phone really do? Well, it was also reported that they were monitoring phone calls in Spain for the average folk. Yeah, just listening in, seeing, seeing what your aunt's up to. They monitored around 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, I'd be a little concerned They're listening to your secret recipes. I hope no one's listening to my phone calls. I mean, who makes phone calls anymore, you know? I see a phone call come in and I'm like, eh. If it's important, they'll leave a message. That's what I say. Even the NSA, leave a message. Number three. Bird drones. Bird drones is not a new concept by any means, but it's fun. It's so fun, we gotta talk about it whenever we can. Back in the early 60s, the CIA had this secret program called Project Aqualine, where they used small drones with a low radar cross section, a little camera almost, all that nice spy gadget stuff. They began working on this back in 1965, believe it or not, and the first prototype was it was a bit obvious. It was big. It weighed over 100 pounds. It was this massive eagle looking camera, but the only way to catch it was to fly it into a net, which broke something almost every single test flight. So cut to 2022. Yeah, there's probably a drone pigeon out there somewhere watching you. Olivia just did a couple lists on hidden cameras. So birds, drones, I mean, probably. Some people think pigeons aren't even real. Some people think pigeons are drones sent by the government to watch us. I don't know. I think pigeons are pigeons. They look like pigeons. They found a hidden camera in a cactus. So sleep in fear, people. Number Two, backup files. When Glenn Greenwald kicked off this whole thing in 2013 with Snowden, it was his massive security breach, of course. Snowden was, of course, in immensely hot water, but he was also ahead of the game right from the start, before even getting caught, before even coming out. Snowden had told Greenwald that if anything crazy were to happen to him in the future, well, he'll just leak even more information. Nice, we love backup files. You got dirt? Well, I got more dirt. Everyone's dirty. If Snowden was unable to access these encrypted documents on one of his four laptops, then it was set up to automatically send said private documents to higher ups and keep it going. AKA the people directly involved would still stay out of the picture. On top of that, Snowden reminded the Guardian that he has many more secrets to spill, specifically the NSA surveillance systems. Yeah, this is why you make backups, people. Duly noted, Snowden. I put this backup script in another Google Doc, just in case the NSA comes around. And finally, number one, Pine Gap. Going to the land down under for this one. Sorry, I said under. She just said under, but I like it. Australia is fun. Pine Gap is a secret military compound built around the Cold War. It's been described as Australia's Area 51. Australia's Area 51? Area 51? I don't know. I, I love Australian accents, but I can't do them. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I don't like spiders either. All we know, the secret base, this mysterious island, was revealed back in 2013 thanks to, you guessed it, Edward Snowden. This guy releases everything. We need another Snowden to come around. This guy's the OG. Turns out this island is not a resort. In fact, it's actually a satellite surveillance base that runs espionage operations. The NSA uses this facility for global interception and they also collect internet and telephone communication records. Again, all those secret recipes that you're telling to your aunt, they're listening, they're taking it. They're like, oh, extra garlic, you bet. That makes sense. Back in the 70s, around 400 American families just happened to move to the nearby Alice Springs. Yeah, not a coincidence at all. Just that many families rolling in. Yeah, no government operations. Just, you know, people just decided to move here. What does your husband do? Oh, he surfs the web waves. He surfs the waves. The waves, just the waves. Just that's it. Nothing to do with the web or online. Pine Gap, bring your kids and bathing suit. Have fun. In our number five spot today, we have the Svalbard Seed Vault. Deep within a mountain that sits in between Norway and the North Pole sits this vault that is more than 320 feet inside. This vault holds a massive collection of seeds. Like we're talking about 890,000 different preserved seed samples from nearly every country in the world. The vault that holds these seeds is made to withstand both man-made and natural disasters and the seeds inside 
inside are meant to be kept safe, so in case of some sort of huge disaster, the seeds inside would ensure the continuation of a wide variety of very diverse food options. The door to this vault is only opened a few times a year, and just a few people are allowed inside in order to deliver seeds to the shelves. In our number four spot today, we have the Mount Weather Emergency Operations Center. Wow, just like an easy name to remember. The Mount Weather Emergency Operations Center is a top secret facility located in Virginia in the United States, and it was built during the Cold War to house and protect high level government officials in the event of a national emergency, such as a nuclear attack. The facility is owned and operated by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, and is designed to be self sufficient for up to several months. It is said that this bunker was even put into action after the assassination of President Kennedy. While the facility is primarily intended for use by government officials, it has also been used to provide emergency shelter for other individuals during natural disasters, such as hurricanes or earthquakes. Despite being a highly secure location, the facility's existence and purpose have been the subject of public scrutiny and controversy over the years. In our number three spot today, we have the Beijing Underground City. The Beijing Underground City, also known as the Beijing Underground Palace, is a vast network of tunnels and underground spaces located beneath the bustling streets of Beijing in China. Originally constructed in the 1960s as a bomb shelter and military command center during, you guessed it, the Cold War, the Underground City has now been transformed into a subterranean network of shopping malls, restaurants, cinemas, and even a skating rink, covering an area of more than 85,000 square meters, the underground city is divided into three main levels and is connected to the city's subway stations and shopping centers. The tunnels and spaces are lit by fluorescent lights and are climate controlled to provide a very comfortable environment for visitors. Some of the underground attractions include the Beijing Planning Exhibition Hall and the Underground City Commercial Center. Despite its fascinating history and modern amenities, the Beijing underground city is still largely unknown to many tourists and visitors to the city making it a hidden gem waiting to be explored. I guess this is one place that is definitely not so secret or mysterious anymore, and it definitely has changed quite vastly since its initial creation. In our number two spot today, we have the Greenbrier Bunker. The Greenbrier Bunker, also known as the Greenbrier Hotel Presidential Emergency Facility, is a former top secret underground bunker located beneath the Greenbrier Resort in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. The bunker was built during the Cold War as a secure location for members of the US Congress to gather in the event of a nuclear attack. The bunker was constructed between 1959 and 1962, and it was kept secret from the public until it was exposed by the Washington Post in 1992. The facility included living quarters, meeting rooms, a power plant, a water treatment facility, and even a broadcast studio to communicate with the outside world. The bunker was maintained until the end of the Cold War in 1992 and was never used for its intended purpose. Today, Today, the bunker is open to the public as a tourist attraction and is managed by the Greenbrier Resort. Visitors can take guided tours of the facility and learn about its history and purpose. What a nice day out with the fam. Here's where we almost had to hide the president. Maybe save the dark history for high school, you know? In our number one spot today, we have the Canadian Forces Base North Bay Complex. This complex is a military base located in North Bay, Ontario, which is just north of Toronto. The complex is home to the Canadian Air Defense Sector, which is responsible for the aerospace surveillance and control of Canadian airspace, and it all sits 60 floors underground. CFB North Bay is a critical element of NORAD and the Binational Canada-United States Joint Defense Plan. The base monitors and defends Canadian and North American airspace through the use of radar, satellite technology, and other very advanced equipment. Because of its precarious situation in between what was the Soviet Union and the United States, this underground facility was built with safety in mind first. It was designed to withstand an attack 267 times more powerful than the one against Hiroshima. Much information on this site remains quite secret and hidden from the public, but it is said that it remains operational to this day, employing over 1,500 military and civilian personnel. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Bye! Want to see more videos like this one? Check out this video next. It's about the creepiest glitches that Alexa has made, and yes, we're talking about the Alexa in your home. Viewer discretion advised. Don't forget to turn off your own Alexa. Click the video now, and we'll see you guys in that next video.